My dad was a college professor, and after working for the same college for 20 or 30 years, they gave him a sabbatical. And uh, he got half his salary. And he and my mom drove back and forth across country. She stopped at various places doing genealogical research. And uh, they spent a bunch of time in San Francisco. So I visited them when they were back in New Hampshire. And they made dinner and my mom made a salad. And it was unlike the other salads she had made in the past. And I said, Mom, you make your salad differently than you, you used to. And so she said, oh yeah, I make them the California way now. And I said, well, what's that? She says, well, you, you don't put the garlic in the dressing. You just uh, take the clove and rub it in the bowl. She says, and then you, you mix the oil and vinegar and you must put it on so it's only one micron thick across every leaf. So it's, everything's coated, but it's just barely there. So that's the way I like my foundation. I don't have perfect skin. I'm 60 years old. I have a bunch of discoloration, kind of red spots, and I can easily have acne and such. But I like my skin to look a little, a little nicer, a little more polished than it otherwise would. I don't want people to say, oh, Ed, his foundation looks so great. I want them to think, I'm just refreshed and rested and got a little sun, which I never get. So that's what I'm wearing now. I'm wearing foundation I like to think of as one micron thick. You can take a good look, see if in 4K it looks like I've got foundation on. You may not believe I have foundation on, I can tell you. There's some my cellar water. And here's a little cotton pad. You get them in the baby aisle. I figure if it'll gentle enough on a baby's bottom, then it can clean my face. So I had exactly that much foundation on half my face. And you can see now, and one side's a little more red, which is one reason I like to wear foundations. I don't like to have a ruddy complexion, which I have. The secret to getting your foundation that thin a layer is first to spread some out on your wrist or the back of your hand. You want less than if you're putting it on your face. Then take a soft, fluffy brush and pick up the foundation from your wrist A using circular motions. You should be able to see it on the brush. I like to use a brush that has white bristles or white tips. This is a real techniques brush. It's better to use a smaller brush like this into a smaller area at a time because you are using circular motions. So you pick it up from your wrist using a circular motion like that, yes, and you deposit it on your face with the same polishing technique. The left side of the screen is a little more polished, a little more even in tone, but you really don't sense that there's foundation on it. So why use a special technique to get a thin layer of foundation? Here's some foundation mixer. It's a reddish color for if your foundation isn't deep or warm enough. If I smear it on my skin and try and get it in the thinnest possible layer, it only gets so thin. But if I t pick up the foundation with a brush in the circular motion and polish it with the same circular motion, I get a much thinner layer of foundation. It's almost as if every foundation has certain tensile strength that can be stretched so thin, but no thinner. It doesn't break, just stops spreading. Here's the foundation as applied thinly and directly. It only gets so sheer compared to the foundation laid down with the polishing technique is half or a third as much. So I mostly do the cheeks and the forehead and a little bit around the eyes where the skin it can be a kind of not the most pleasant color. I don't do that much in my jaw where I shave because when you shave you're always removing the skin and so the skin tends to be fairly smooth there. 
I do as little as possible around the middle, the center of the face, because that's where it's most noticeable. So on the right side of the screen, you can see the skin is a little smoother, a little softer, and it's redder, and the skin is less even on the left. You can use the same technique with a darker foundation to bronze or contour. This is a Catrice liquid foundation. It's much deeper than my skin, and it's something that I mix in with mineral sunscreens to bring it closer to the shade of my own skin. And I do the bronzing up on the brow bone on the forehead, where you would get sun on the top of the forehead. Now here, when I put it on, you can see I put too much of it in one area and have to use that circular motion to smooth it out. And I'm going to do the cheekbones, the perimeter of the face, and also the neck. I'm really bronzing and contouring or bronzing. I'm getting the periphery of my face to recede and also making the high points of the face warm. So this was actually two shades of foundation. Burt's Bees, Goodness Glows, and Rich Caramel, which you'd think would be too dark for me, but it's not that dark. And then when you put that on, it makes your skin tone a little too even, so you need to bring back some color and some light and dark. I think one of the dirty secrets of makeup is the more makeup you use, the more you need to use. You put on foundation to make your skin tone more even, and then it's so even it looks unnatural, and then you have to put on some more makeup to look like you have a little bit of color. So instead of bronzer, I just use some darker makeup around the perimeter of my face and the places where the sun would hit it, the cheekbones and the brow bones, and then a little down your neck to make that recede too. Some people say that that's contouring, not bronzing, and you shouldn't use the same color, but some of us want makeup to be easy and simple, and we want to use as few products as possible. And that's what my channel is about. So if you're interested in that, hang around or come back.